a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Assault Rifle An assault rifle is a selective fire rifle that uses an intermediate cartridge and a detachable magazine. Assault rifles were first used during World War II, though Western nations were slow to accept the assault rifle concept. By the end of the 20th century they had become the standard weapon in most of the world's armies, replacing full-powered rifles and submachine guns in most roles. Examples include the STG-44, AK-47 and the M16 rifle. The term assault rifle is generally attributed to Adolf Hitler, who for propaganda purposes used the German word Sturmgewehr as the new name for the MP-43 subsequently known as the Sturmgewehr 44 or STG-44. However, other sources dispute that Hitler had much to do with coining the new name besides signing the production order. The STG-44 is generally considered the first selective fire military rifle to popularize the assault rifle concept. Today, the term assault rifle is used to define firearms sharing the same basic characteristics as the STG-44. Characteristics The U.S. Army defines assault rifles as short, compact, selective fire weapons that fire a cartridge intermediate in power between submachine gun and rifle cartridges. In a strict definition, a firearm must have at least the following characteristics to be considered an assault rifle. Rifles that meet most of these criteria, but not all, are technically not assault rifles, despite frequently being called such. For example, Sturmgewehr 44 The Germans were the first to pioneer the assault rifle concept during World War II, based upon research that showed that most firefights happen within 400 meters and that contemporary rifles were overpowered for most small arms combat. They would soon develop a select fire intermediate powered rifle combining the firepower of a submachine gun with the range and accuracy of a rifle. The result was the Sturmgewehr 44, which the Germans produced in large numbers. Approximately half a million were made. It fired a new and revolutionary intermediate-powered cartridge, the 7.92x33mm Kurs. This new cartridge was developed by shortening the standard 7.92x57mm mouse around and giving it a lighter 125-grain bullet that limited range, but allowed for more controllable automatic fire. A smaller lighter cartridge also allowed soldiers to carry more ammunition to support the higher consumption rate of automatic fire. The Sturmgewehr 44 features an inexpensive, easy-to-make, stamped steel design and a 30-round detachable box magazine. This weapon was the prototype of all successful automatic rifles. Characteristically it had a straight stock with a barrel under the gas cylinder to reduce the turning moment of recoil of the rifle in the shoulder and thus help reduce the tendency of shots to climb in automatic fire. The barrel and overall length were shorter than a traditional rifle and it had a pistol grip to hold the weapon more securely in automatic fire. The principle of this weapon, the reduction of muzzle impulse to get usable automatic fire within the actual ranges of combat, was probably the most important advance in small arms since the invention of smokeless powder. AK-47 Like the Germans, the Soviets were influenced by experience showing that most combat engagements occur within 400 meters and that their soldiers were consistently outgunned by heavily armed German troops, especially those armed with the Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifles. On July 15, 1943, a Sturmgewehr was demonstrated before the People's Commissariat of Arms of the USSR. The Soviets were so impressed with the Sturmgewehr that they immediately set about developing an intermediate caliber automatic rifle of their own to replace the badly outdated Mosin-Nagant bolt-action rifles and PPSH-41 submachine guns that armed most of the Soviet army. The Soviets soon developed the 7.62x39mm M43 cartridge, the semi-automatic SKS carbine and the RPD light machine gun. Shortly after World War II, the Soviets developed the AK-47 assault rifle, which would quickly replace the SKS in Soviet service. The AK-47 was finalized, adopted, and entered widespread service in the Soviet Army in the early 1950s. Its firepower, ease of use, low production costs, 
and reliability, were perfectly suited for the Red Army's new mobile warfare doctrines. In the 1960s, the Soviets introduced the RPK light machine gun, itself an AK-47 type weapon with a bipod, a stronger receiver, and a longer, heavier barrel that would eventually replace the RPD light machine gun. The AK-47 was widely supplied or sold to nations allied with the USSR, and the blueprints were shared with several friendly nations. As a result, more AK-type weapons have been produced, than all other assault rifles combined. As of 2004, of the estimated 500 million firearms worldwide, approximately 100 million belong to the Kalashnikov family, three quarters of which are AK-47s. Battle Rifles The US Army was influenced by combat experience with semi-automatic weapons such as the M1 Garand and M1 Carbine, which enjoyed a significant advantage over enemies armed primarily with bolt-action rifles. Although U.S. Army studies of World War II combat accounts had very similar results to that of the Germans and Soviets, the U.S. Army failed to recognize the importance of the assault rifle concept, and instead maintained its traditional views and preference for high-powered semi-automatic rifles. At the time, the U.S. Army believed that the Sturmgewehr 44 was intended in a general way to serve the same purpose as the U.S. Carbine, and was in many ways inferior to the M1 Carbine, and was of little importance. After World War II, the United States military started looking for a single automatic rifle to replace the M1 Garand, M1-M2 Carbines, M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle, M3, Grease Gun, and Thompson Submachine Gun. Early experiments with select fire versions of the M1 Garand proved disappointing. During the Korean War, the select fire M2 carbine largely replaced the submachine gun in US service and became the most widely used carbine variant. Combat experience suggested that the Dot 30 carbine round was underpowered. American weapons designers reached the same conclusion as the German and Soviet ones. An intermediate round was necessary and recommended a small caliber high-velocity cartridge. Senior American commanders had faced fanatical enemies and experienced major logistical problems during World War II and the Korean War, and insisted that a single powerful .30 caliber cartridge be developed, that could be used by the new automatic rifle, and also by the new general-purpose machine gun in concurrent development. This culminated in the development of the 7.62x51mm NATO cartridge, and the M14 rifle which was basically an improved select fire M1 Garand with a 20-round magazine. The US also adopted the M60 GPMG. Its NATO partners adopted the FN Forland Heckler and Koch G3 rifles, as well as the FN Mag and Rheinmetall MG3 GPMGs. The FN4 is a 7.62x51mm NATO, selective fire, automatic rifle produced by the Belgian armaments manufacturer Fabrique Nationale de Herstel. During the Cold War it was adopted by many North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries, most notably with the British Commonwealth as the L1A1. It is one of the most widely used rifles in history, having been used by more than 90 countries. The fall was predominantly chambered for the 7.62mm NATO round, and, because of its prevalence and widespread use among the armed forces of many Western nations, during the Cold War it was nicknamed the right arm of the free world. The Heckler and Koch G3 is a 7.62x51mm NATO selective fire automatic rifle produced by the German armament manufacturer Heckler and Koch GmbH in collaboration with the Spanish state-owned design and development agency set. The rifle proved successful in the export market, being adopted by the armed forces of over 60 countries. After World War II, German technicians involved in developing the Sturmgewehr 45 continued their research in France at Seam. The STG 45 mechanism was modified by Ludwig Vorgrimmler and Theodor Luffler at the Mulhaus facility between 1946 and 1949. Vorgrimmler later went to work at SETM in Spain, and developed the line of SETM automatic rifles based on his improved STG-45 design. Germany eventually purchased the license for the SETM design, and manufactured the Heckler and Koch G3 as well as an entire line of weapons built on the same system, one of the most famous being the MP5 SMG. M16 
the first confrontations between the AK-47 and the M-14 came in the early part of the Vietnam War. Battlefield reports indicated that the M-14 was uncontrollable in full auto and that soldiers could not carry enough ammunition to maintain fire superiority over the AK-47. And, while the M-2 carbine offered a high rate of fire, it was underpowered and ultimately outclassed by the AK-47. A replacement was needed, a medium between the traditional preference for high-powered rifles such as the M14, and the lightweight firepower of the M2 carbine. As a result, the Army was forced to reconsider a 1957 request by General Willard G. Wyman, commander of the U.S. Continental Army Command to develop a .223 caliber select fire rifle weighing 6 pounds when loaded with a 20-round magazine. The 5.56mm round had to penetrate a standard U.S. helmet at 500 yards and retain a velocity in excess of the speed of sound, while matching or exceeding the wounding ability of the .30 carbine cartridge. This request ultimately resulted in the development of a scaled-down version of the Armour Light AR-10, called Armour Light AR-15 rifle. However, despite overwhelming evidence that the AR-15 could bring more firepower to bear than the M-14, the Army opposed the adoption of the new rifle. In January 1963, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara concluded that the AR-15 was the superior weapon system and ordered a halt to M-14 production. At the time, the AR-15 was the only rifle available that could fulfill the requirement of a universal infantry weapon for issue to all services. After modifications, the new redesigned rifle was subsequently adopted as the M-16 rifle was much lighter compared to the M14 it replaced, ultimately allowing soldiers to carry more ammunition. The air-cooled, gas-operated, magazine-fed assault rifle was made of steel, aluminum alloy, and composite plastics, truly cutting-edge for the time. Designed with full and semi-automatic capabilities, the weapon initially did not respond well to wet and dirty conditions, sometimes even jamming in combat. After a few minor modifications, the weapon gained in popularity among troops on the battlefield. Despite its early failures the M16 proved to be a revolutionary design, and stands as the longest continuously serving rifle in American military history. It has been adopted by many US allies, and the 5.56x45mm NATO cartridge has become not only the NATO standard, but, the standard assault rifle cartridge in much of the world. It also led to the development of small-caliber high-velocity service rifles by every major army in the world, including the USSR and People's Republic of China. Today, many small arms experts consider the M16 the standard by which all other assault rifles are judged. HK-33 During the 1960s other countries would follow the Americans' lead and begin to develop 5.56x45mm assault rifles, most notably Germany, with the Heckler and Koch HK-33. The HK-33 was essentially a smaller 5.56mm version of the 7.62x51mm Heckler and Koch G3 rifle. As one of the first 5.56mm assault rifles on the market, it would go on to become one of the most widely distributed assault rifles. The HK-33 featured a modular design with a wide range of accessories that could be easily removed and arranged in a variety of configurations. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?